Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, we are Sorted Food. Now we have two classically trained chefs here who are very excited for what they're about to review. This is the Ninja Cream Me, Cream My, Cream Me, Cre oh, Creamy. Obviously not an ad. It claims to turn almost anything into ice cream, sorbets, milkshakes and smoothie bowls, but it's particularly excited our chefs. Why? Good question. It takes us back to professional kitchens and a very expensive bit of kit called a Packerjet. What is an ice cream maker? It is a high speed blender. So normally used for ice creams in kitchens, but you can make up the bits and then you can put butter in there. You can make pâtés or parfaits in there and stuff, but it's very, very, very similar to what's in front of us. But the original Packerjet version that I think this has been inspired by is four, five, six thousand pounds. They don't actually have a published price, you have to ask them directly and they'll quote for you. If you ask, you can't afford it. Whereas this is a couple of hundred. Should we make some ice cream? What have we always learned about making ice cream? It's gotta be cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Churn as it freezes, right? Yep. Right, okay. Not with this. We should also stress, nobody in this building has yet plugged this machine in. We have pre-frozen some because they take 24 hours. <laughs> Test number one, easy chocolate ice cream, straight from the recipe book, as all of the ones today are going to be. Basically, a very precise amount of cream cheese, 18 grams, warm it slightly, and then add in cocoa powder, caster sugar, vanilla extract, whisk, and then slowly whisk in double cream and whole milk, weighing everything. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> so the easy one has no cooking basis. It's just mix lots of ingredients, pour it all in, which in theory should go up to the max line because the recipe is made for it, and then freeze for 24 He's hours. Setting it up already. <laughs> Pop a lid on it, reach off camera, and see what comes back. Thank you. <laughs> so that is a solid, solid piece of cream. This comes out, the lid comes off. Actually, mate, I'll have um, an Americano. That would be lovely. <laughs> the blade sits in there. Pop it in. Oh, blade, the blade goes in from the top. Pop the lid back on. It needs to twist to lock into place. Ooh, that was satisfying. <laughs> Select ice cream, of which there are many settings depending on the fat and sugar content, the gelato base, the sorbet, or a milkshake, but it's the ice cream setting we want. And let it do its thing for a couple of minutes. Micro fine shaving at very high speed, I think, and then it winds itself back up, retracts the shaft so we can get it out. <gasps> oh my God, I'm sorry. And that's it, done, job done. We've got ice cream. No. In theory, looks sandy. It does say that if it comes out chalky, you can give it a respin. So we need to respin it. And what we're looking for is thick, creamy, scoopable ice cream. Take two. Thick cream. I reckon it might just still be a bit too cold. I think that's genuinely what the issue is. Can we try some chocolate crumble? Yes. <laughs> Open yeah. wide. Yeah. Oh, it moves. That very is tasty. very smooth and very creamy. Very yes. luxurious. Yeah. One more time, go on. This is common practice, right? Yeah. In a package jet, you always want to level it off before refreezing. Yes, she's done it. She's done it. Only um, mildly, but she's done it. It's getting there. What we're it saying is, is it was it was it was too cold. Yeah, I reckon it was. Oh. I can see what you've done there, Poppy. I didn't mean to do that. Two oh. balls and a quinelle. <laughs> <laughs> and you think I'm the bad one. That looks proper in that state, really. As a normal, £200 is a lot of money for a blender, but it's a very powerful blender. The fact that it can blend up a solid piece of ice and turn to something that resembles ice cream, I'm happy with that. That's a good yeah. consistency. It's really nice. It just, uh, when you first look at it, you go, oh, that's not what I was expecting. To be fair, it says in the book that it should be frozen to within about a 10 degree, 13 degree difference, minus 12 to minus 25. And we have got it at the upper end of that, the very coldest, because that's what our freezer is. 
So it is within what they say it can do, within a spin or two, but it is the very upper end of that. Sounds mm. silly, but now that ice cream has warmed mm. up. Mm. <laughs> that, it's good. What you need is warm ice cream, is what I'm that hearing. That is really good. <laughs> it's really good. Test number two. The science behind these recipes is different ratios of water, fat, protein and sugar, but there is a sorbet setting designed to transform fruit-based recipes with high water and sugar content into creamy delights. They could not be easier. Oh my goodness, that is one ingredient. One pineapple sorbet. There's no minimum fill, there is only a maximum. Get it in, love. Okay, that's it, that's it. That's the recipe. Since you've done your recipe, I'm going to do my recipe, which is Pim's Sorbet. Two <laughs> cans of pre-mixed Pim's. That's it. Well, it's already kind of Ooh. already got oh, in it. Ebers. It? Ebers. Don't waste it. Lick it now. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Lick it now. Go Lick on. Lick it good. Lick, Lick that Pim's just, just like you should. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours of freezing. Yep. Exactly the same. One tin of pineapple. That looks better. Better than the other one. Still, I would say is too cold. So I think our freezer at minus 25, which it says is fine, is the absolute extreme, and perhaps somewhere else would be better. Mighty tasty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That tastes like tin pineapple, that. <laughs> <laughs> So we got two scoops, which taste great and are kind of scooped okay. I just want to try a respin to see if we can get it even smoother and creamier, which is a weird word for a sorbet because there's no dairy or cream. Oh, now we're yes. talking. Oh, yes. really different. Okay, now look at that. What is the cupping? That's the second time I've seen. Yeah. It's just to warm up the back of the spoon to help it slip off. Right. Okay, That's cool. It. For a single ingredient sorbet, which has, at best, 30 seconds of prep, pretty good. Delicious. Really good. And I reckon you could add different little flavours in there if you wanted to as well. There is a but, though. Our Pim's one went bang in the freezer. Ooh. Ooh. Way above the max line, spilled over, leaked everywhere, didn't work. Here we go. It does make a bloody mess. Positive attitude. Positive attitude, yeah. Fought through his negativity, yeah. and bang, we're back in the game. Yeah. Here we go. Very soft. Oh, it is. Again, one ingredient. Yeah. It's frozen, it's scooped. Why don't we mix some raspberries into it? Yeah, let's mix some raspberries. If you have to do it stirring, don't you? No, there's mix. a mixing setting. Oh, sick. Okay, let's get some raspberries in there. That looks delicious. Definitely more slushy because we've mixed it twice. Interesting that even in our freezer, this hasn't frozen cold enough because of the sugar content in the cocktail. Mm. Or and the, the alcohol, alcohol content in the cocktail. Mm. All of a sudden, wow. summer. Ooh. That's wet. Yeah. It's frozen the raspberries a little bit. <laughs> That's incredible. It's really cool. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. First things first. Get that it's very wet. <laughs> I mean, unusual, and I'm not saying amazing, just surprising. Yeah. <laughs> the raspberry globules are yeah. hard. Yeah. Poppy, what's your take out on test two sorbets? I think the sorbets, especially the uh, pineapple one, has worked better. With, I think with every kind of gadget, you have to do it a few Play times to get it right for what suits you. So I've, I'm impre I am genuinely impressed with both things. I also think if you're going to invest 200 quid yeah. into a machine, you're likely to invest some time in mm -hmm. getting it right yeah. and practicing to make it perfect. And if you've invested that much, I think you want to find some really easy things, which means you use it more often. Yeah. And sticking in a tin of fruit in oh. juice, now we know that fruit is also high in sugar, but actually that's a really nice way of doing one portion of your fruit yeah. and veg a day mm -hmm. um, by serving up. Yeah, you'll get kids eating it, easy. Mm. Let's do another test. Oh, what we got next? 
Test number three, dairy free. Lovely. So this is a lower fat, lower sugar option. So we're gonna use the light ice cream button. Oat cream, oat milk, vanilla, three pitted dates, three tablespoons of light agave syrup. We're gonna use brown rice syrup, because that's what we've got. Blend. <laughs> <laughs> Lid on, freeze. 24 hours of freezing. It has allowed some of the date to sink to the bottom. As to be fair, the chocolate one also did. Yep, some yep. of the cocoa went to the bottom. Like it does say that's not a problem. <laughs> no. Oh, what? It's in the edit now. It's, it's, it's been said. It's, yeah. Ice cream! Why don't we skip straight ahead to some mix-ins? Cookies, frozen fruit, brownies, they will get broken down. Hard mix-ins, no, 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 nuts, no, chocolate in chips, poppy, in in the the ice cream. Not, not in your mouth, not in your face. But now with mix-ins. And hope it crumbles. So the question is, how even is this mixed in? Oh, very. it's very mixed in, yeah. That looks delicious. Oh, that looks like a beautiful oh, consistency. <gasps> yes, look at that. Vegans away forward. Yeah, that's the one. What we're learning is our freezer's too cold, but give it 10, 15 minutes out of the freezer, mm. seems to be churning better. But and the second respin or mix in helps. It does say in the mix in stage, we don't recommend fresh fruit which we definitely did with raspberries moments ago, um, but that's because it softens the ice cream too much, which it did to the sorbet. So in hindsight, they actually did say that. We just tried it anyway. Test number four, more complex. Mm -hmm. Gelato, so you make a custard base. We've done that dozens of times before, but we're actually doing a salted caramel gelato base. So you make a caramel, add the cream, warm it up, and then use that to thicken with egg yolk and the sugar, the usual method. Chill it before it goes into the freezer, and then freeze it solid. Wait a minute. He's so you, got lazy. You, you're gonna skip all the, I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you wanna see how it's done, it's exactly the same recipe that we used in the gelato maker made by Magimix, and we did that like last year. <laughs> You're right there. Oh, you fine. <laughs> Got out to stand. <laughs> Moment of truth. So obviously gelato is denser, it is heavier, it melts slower, which is what makes it so rich in the mouth. Ooh, that Whoa. looks absolutely phenomenal. Ooh. 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 It's very, very soft. It looks nice though. For full transparency, because our first ice cream was too cold and a bit kind of chalky, we left all the others out of the freezer for 20 minutes or so, Ooh. so that they kind of churn better. I'm not sure this needed it because it's very soft. Mm. The caramel went quite far on this, didn't it? Yeah, it's a, quite bitter. Quite bitter. It's an adult's caramel. It's a mature caramel. It is. That one, in hindsight, should have churned rock hard yeah. rather than leaving it for 15, 20 minutes like the others. Yeah. Test five of about 30 recipes in the book, we've gone for no cook strawberry ice cream. These recipes are getting more and more shorthand, aren't they? Well, I know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, strawberries, 225 grams, trimmed and quartered in a bowl with sugar, syrup, and lemon juice. What are you doing to that strawberry? It's good to get you five a day. 
Use a fork, mash the strawberries roughly, and then let it sit for 10 minutes so the sugar draws out all the wonderfulness of the strawberries. Then we're gonna add in cream and freeze it for 24 hours. At which point, it looks a bit like that, although that one had a little bit less mixing. That looks really good. <gasps> Very soft. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Best consistency so far. That looks absolutely delicious. Quit now. Oh, I'm really impressed with that. I am. The, for I'm a no-cook really... strawberry ice cream, that is super simple. Boys, have a taste of that. We can go into this one. So you're probably allergic mm. to this one. No. Are you? you sure? A bit of meringue on top. Oh. It's already quite soft, so we're not going to do the mixing. We're just going to mix it in. That is very, very creamy. Mm. That's better than most strawberry ice creams you can buy. Mm. Definitely. Which is more strawberry flavoured. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that's real strawberry. That's really good. A little bit of shortbread in that. You've got your Ooh. strawberry cheesecake. Yeah. It's almost it's like it's just really cold strawberry mousse. Yeah. So tell me, how else would you make strawberry ice cream that good? I'm always a no-cook on strawberry as well. So strawberry puree, um, then single cream, um, milk powder, um, some kind of stabiliser and a little bit of sugar into the puree and then you freeze it, paco it and then it got strawberry ice cream. Impressive. That is very impressive. I'm really yeah. impressed with that. Should we try one last setting? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Test six, milkshake. 300 grams of chocolate ice cream, 250 mils of whole milk. Worth pointing out, this is the ice cream we made earlier that we popped back in the freezer while we made all the others. So we have chocolate ice cream on hand. 125 mils of whole milk. Milkshake button. That's delicious. <laughs> it's thick, it holds it's blended ice cream into something that's slurpable. As we approach the end of this video, are you still just as excited as you were as you entered this challenge? I was a bit disappointed in our first spin and our second respin and our third respin, but I blame that on the fact that our freezer was mm -hmm. at the absolute coldest, because actually, as we moved on and tried the other things, all the others got increasingly better. Yeah. What I like about it is compared to other ice cream machines, it's pretty slim would sit on a worktop and you have multiple flavours in multiple tubs that fit in a freezer easier than the base of a ice cream machine you need to pre-freeze or having a whopping great big ice cream machine on your work surface. Does it do a good enough job at home to warrant spending that money on it? A hundred percent. Yeah. Not a hundred percent of a job, but I'm a hundred percent certain it does a good enough of a job to warrant the three to six percent price. Oh, I'd, I'd have one in a second. Really? Yeah, mm. I love that. I thought it was really good. Take it if you're quick. If you're not, Barry will take it because he <laughs> takes all the nice gadgets home. <laughs> well, you've heard what our two very excitable chefs think, but what do you think? Comment down below. Let us know. Would you buy the Ninja Cream cre Creamy? Creamy. Creamy. Also, if there's another bit of kit out there from restaurants that you think our chefs should be reviewing, then let us know and comment down below. And finally, a massive thank you to Poppy for coming in. It's lovely to have you back. Always is. Always. We missed you. I just like, you feed me, you get me drunk occasionally, you get to eat <laughs> ice cream, only because we were testing drinks, not like outside of it, that'd be weird, but yeah. And if you haven't already followed Poppy, we'll put all the links downstairs. <laughs> no. She loves to make these weird. <laughs> loves it. I had lingonberries at the weekend <sighs> with Swedish meatballs, fresh, so good. I've only had a jam in this country.